Okay, let's take a look at another question related to an asset retirement obligation. On January 1st, 2020, Offshore Corporation erected a drilling platform at a cost of 5.46 million. Offshore is legally entitled, legally required to dismantle and remove the platform at the end of its six year useful life at an estimated cost of 950,000. Offshore estimates that 70% of the cost of dismantling and removing the platform is caused by acquiring the asset itself and 30% is caused by using the platform in production. The present value of the increase in the asset retirement obligation related to the production of oil was 32 and 34,000. The residual value of the drilling platform is zero and offshore uses straight line depreciation. And they prepare their financials in accordance with IFRS. Okay, quite a bit of information there. And it says, prepare the journal entries to record the acquisition of the drilling platform and the asset retirement obligation. And it says the discount rate is 8%. It gives us a variety of ways to do this. It says we can use factor tables, a financial calculator, or an Excel present value function. Okay, so because we use financial calculators quite a bit in uh, financial accounting one, then let's, let's use our financial calculator here. So what we don't know is the present value. What we do know is that the asset retirement obligation is going to cost 950,000. So the future value is 950. We know that I is 8%, it says an appropriate discount rate is 8%. And we know that N or the number of periods is six because it says it has a six year useful life. And we know that the payment is zero. The payment in asset retirement obligations is always zero. They're not paid as you go. They're always paid at the end of the project. So if we type all that into our financial calculator and we click compute present value, we'll get a present value of 598,661. Okay, so is this our asset retirement obligation? Well, this is where we need to be really careful. So let's take another look at the question. And this is an interesting, uh, an interesting statement here. They estimate that 70% of the cost is related to acquiring the asset and 30% caused by production. So we actually only want to record the amount on acquisition plus this entry is at January 1st. So we only want to actually record the 70% related to the actual platform, not the amount related to production. So our asset retirement is actually going to be the present value of the 950, but then 70% of that amount. So that's actually going to be 419063. And so again, let's just think about that. So we know that in the future, we're going to have to pay 950,000 to dismantle this drilling platform. But the part of that that actually relates to acquiring the asset is only 70% of what we know in the future will cost us 950 because there is part 30% of that is caused by production. So we're only looking at the acquisition at this point. So it's a little bit different. So our entry there, and look, we're doing two entries. We're doing the acquisition of the drilling platform and the asset retirement obligation. So first let's do the acquisition of the platform of the asset. So we're going to go debit drilling platform. Credit cash. And this is going to be this amount from the question where it says that it bought the asset for 5.46 million. Well, that's the amount that we would actually have on our statement of financial position for the asset, ignoring the asset retirement obligation. 5.460. I missed a zero there. 5.460000. Okay. So now we've got the asset there. And then next we need to do the ARO. Set up the ARO. And this is going to be at the present value of the amount we think we're going to have to pay related to the acquisition. So it's 70% of the present value of the 950, which is going to be debit drilling platform. So we capitalize this into the asset under both IFRS and ASPE upon acquisition. 
and credit ARO. And so this is going to be our 419063, 419063. So you can see that the drilling platform is valued on our books now more than 5.46 million at this point. So we've increased it by the value of the ARO. Okay, so we did that one. Next, it says prepare any journal entries required for the platform and the asset obligation at December 31st. So this is just the end of the first fiscal year. This isn't the actual retirement of the ARO. Okay, so now we've got December 31st, 2020. Okay, so we're always gonna have two year end entries. Okay, so the first one that we're always gonna have is depreciation. Just like any capital asset, we need to depreciate the drilling platform. Now, what we need to be careful of is what is the drilling platform on our books for? Because it's, at the, it's on our books, the sum of these two things. So we put it on our books originally for 5.46 million. And then we increased it by the ARO, which was 419063. So the amount that's on our books right now is the sum of those two things, which is Five four six zero. So we've got it on our books for five eight seven nine zero six three, and then we're going to divide this by six years for the depreciation, which is going to give us an annual depreciation of nine seven nine. 844. Okay. So the entry then that we need to record is debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation drilling platform, just like we would for any other asset. And so this is going to be our 979844. 979-844. Okay. The next year-end entry that we're gonna have is to increase the present value of the ARO. We know that as time goes by, our ARO needs to be at that 950. So we need to increase the present value, the time value of money. And the way that we calculate the amount to do this is we take the ARO that we have on our books, which right now is at 419063. We multiply it by the discount rate. So we just say times 8%. It's going to give us an increase of 33,525. So our entry is simply going to be debit interest expense. IFRS records the increase in the present value to interest expense. And the credit is going to be to arrow. The point of this entry is to increase the arrow. So we know that that's going to be the credit. Okay, and the last thing that we have, and this is specific to the question. So this isn't always an adjusting entry, but in the question up here, we can see that they told us that the present value of an increase in the offset retirement obligation related to production in 2020 was 32,328. So we need to increase our um, arrow by that. So increase due to production. So we're going to have debit and IFRS puts that cost into inventory as a product cost. So this cost will go through the income statement when the oil is sold and credit ARO. And this is simply going to be the amount from the question, 33,328, 33,328. Okay, let's go up. So we did that. Now it says prepare journal entries required for the platform and the asset retirement obligation as of December 31st, 2021. So a year later, what entries are we going to make? So still not retiring the asset, retire the asset still not ready to um, to resume to restore the property or um, make good on the asset retirement obligation. We're simply a year ahead here. So December 31st, 2021. So we always have our two entries. So the first is going to be depreciation. And depreciation is straight line. So
So straight line depreciation, but so that amount actually will be exactly the same. So we're gonna have debit, depreciation expense, credit, accumulated depreciation, drill, drilling platform. And this is gonna be the same amount we had before, which was 979844, 979 Okay, the next entry that we know we need to record is to increase the present value of the ARO. And so that is going to be a calculation. So what we need to do to figure out what that is, is we need to figure out what the asset retirement obligation is. So the asset retirement obligation value, and then we're gonna multiply that value by 8%. So let's take a look. What did we have our asset retirement? So we had the ARO on our books originally at this 419.063. So let's start with that. So we had 419.063. Then we increased it for the interest expense. So we increased the present value of the arrow already once at the end of December 31st, 2020. So we increased it by this 33,525. And we increased it here to do with the production, the increase in production. So we increased it here by 33,328. 328. So the sum of those are what the asset retirement obligation is on our books. So take a look. 33. So we've got everything on our books times 419063 plus 33525. 33328. Okay, and then, so that's 484.916 times 8% is gonna give us that amount. So times 8% is going to give us our amount, which is gonna be 38.793, okay? So that's what we're going to record now. And so again, we remember that IFRS puts that amount to interest expense and it puts the credit to the ARO. Again, the point of this is to increase the ARO in our book, so it's getting closer and closer to the future value. So the debit under IFRS goes to interest expense. And then because of the question, again, we're gonna have the increase due to production. And if you look up at the question, it gave us the amount for that as well. It said the amount in 2021 was 34,914. So in production, so I for us puts that amount into inventory and the credit is gonna be ARO and that's our 34,914 right from the question. Okay, so we did that one. I guess this is a long question. Next one says, assume that on December 31st, Offshore dismantles and removes the platform at a cost of 922000 So, and then it says, prepare the journal entry to record the settlement and assume it's carrying amount at that time of 950. So we're jumping way into the future here. So we've jumped all the way to December 31st, 2025, which is when we're actually going to settle the six-year obligation. And... Um, and we are going to, we find out that we accrued the asset retirement obligation at 950, but we actually only have to settle it at 922. So what's the entry for that? Okay, so let's see. So settlement of ARO, and this is December 31st, 2025. So we're gonna, we know that the debit needs to clear out the asset retirement obligation from our books. So we don't want that anymore, there anymore. Um, we need to clear that out. And we know that the question said, and we were planning to have that valued at 950,000. We know that in cash, the question tells us that we only owed 922,000. 
So what's the difference? Well, we're actually going to have a gain on arrow that's going to be the difference, and that's going to balance our entry out at that 28,000. So let's take a look back up at the question. So we did that, which is great. So the next part of the question says, repeat the entire question, assuming that offshore prepares financial statements in accordance with ASP. Well, that's a little bit excessive. So let's, instead of repeating this entire question, let's look through our responses with using I for S and see what would be different with ASPE. So the present value and the, the application of 70% to do with the acquisition of the asset to give us that 419063, completely the same under I for S or ASPE. So the putting the asset on our books, same I for S and ASPE, setting up the ARO, same I for S and ASPE. The year on entries depreciation is exactly the same. So depreciation, no change. The only thing that would change here is that when we increase the present value of the arrow, see how we put IFRS puts that amount to interest expense? Well, ASPE would have the exact same entry, but the debit would go to accretion expense. Simply a different account, also on the income statement, but it's very specific. ASPE wants to call that accretion and IFRS calls it interest expense. Other than that, the amounts and the credit to the arrow would be exactly the same. Another difference here is that in the increase due to production, IFRS puts the increase into inventory, whereas ASPE would put the increase into the drilling platform, into the asset itself. So again, it's just a matter of where the debit goes, the credit's going to arrow, and this is an increase in the arrow due to production. Or, or more oil production. So IFRS would put the debit to inventory and ASCII puts the asset puts the debit to the asset. So when we first set up the arrow, we debited the asset for the initial setup of the arrow. And ASPE just continues to debit any increases in the arrow to the asset. Whereas IFRS says, listen, if the increase is due to production, it's a product cost and it should go to inventory. So same thing here. So remember, we just repeated the same entries for the next year, December 31st, 2021. So depreciation is no change, the present value of the ARO. So this amount would be accretion expense. Okay. And then this here would be the asset or the drilling platform. This is an increase in the ARO due to production. So IFRS puts it to inventory and ASPE puts it to the asset. Okay, and then the settlement of the ARO would be the same. So that summarizes the differences between ARO and ASPE and we made it through this entire question. Great job. If you can get through this question, you can get through any asset retirement obligation question.